Thank you for joining me here at Completing Christ. We continue to walk through the book of Colossians. Uh, today we're going to finish up chapter 2. Now remember Paul's writing to the church at Colossae. He cared about these people. He loved these people. He wanted to go see them. But he's in jail because he loved Jesus. And he'd been preaching and teaching the truth of the gospel. And he, he, he's addressing in this book some false teaching that had entered within the church. And he's addressing that. But his approach is simply just to present truth after truth after truth. Because truth always exposes error. And in chapter 2... Begin with verse 20. We're going to read the, the remainder of the chapter, which is 20, 20 through verse 23. Listen to what he says. He says, If you have died with Christ to the elementary principle of the world, why, as if you were living in the world, do you submit yourself to decrees such as do not handle, do not taste, and do not touch? Verse 22, Which all refer to things destined to perish with use in accordance with with the commandments and the teachings of men. These are matters which, which have, to be sure, the appearance of wisdom in self-made religion, self-abasement, and severe treatment of the body. But listen to this. But are of no value against fleshly indulgent. You hear what he's saying? He says, look, all the stuff that you're doing, all the stuff that you're being told that you have to do, that they're absolutely useless when it comes to fleshly indulgent, that you must understand what he, what he says in verse 20, the first part of that statement, that when you came to Jesus, that you died. He says, if you have died with Christ, or, or as believers, since we have died with Christ, to the elementary principles of the world, then why in the world are you still submitting yourself to these man-made principles and these man-made rituals which have absolute, absolute no value to stopping you from doing what you're what you're doing, indulging, indulging in the flesh. Now let's go back and let's walk through this. All right, he says, first of all, he says, if or since you have died with Christ to the elementary principles of the world. Now remember, as believers, when we come to Jesus, we die. All right, and he's reminding them of that because he says, look, if you don't get this, if you don't get the fact that you that you when you came to Jesus that you died and it's no longer you but it's Christ in you that all this other stuff what you think it's going to do it's not going to do for you because it's in Jesus and Jesus alone that we find victory it's in Jesus and Jesus alone that that we overcome the indulgence of the flesh. So <clears throat> remember that, that when we come to Jesus, that we die. Galatians 2.20, that I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. You see, it's in dying that we really begin to live. And it's, it's understanding as believers that it's Christ in me who is the hope of glory. You know, I, I think it's one of the most misunderstood principles taught in the Word of God that most people believe and most people think think that Christianity is what we do for him. It's me trying to do more. It's me trying to be better. It's me trying to obey more rules. No, it's not. It's about understanding what Jesus did for us on the cross and that, that when we respond to that and when we begin to understand our need for Jesus, we receive by the grace of God, we receive the right relationship that God offers us through Jesus, that he comes and lives inside of us through the person of the Holy Spirit to empower us to live in a way that we could never live on our own. And he's reminding them of this. So he's been telling them over and over again, is Christ in you, the hope of glory, that you've got to understand this principle that when we come to Jesus, that we die. And he says here, he says, if, if that's happened to you, why is it that you're still living in accordance to the elementary principles of the world, which basically is legalism. Basically, it's, it's, it's these principles that were really important to them that that they had that they had made law out of and he says look that you died to all that stuff it's not obeying a set of rules it's not doing things a certain way but it's understanding that it is christ in you and he, he goes on and he says that you're living you're living 
in the world. That you're living like you did not die. All right? That you're living like that is not Jesus in you. He says you keep submitting yourself to these things. You keep placing yourself under the authority of these certain things. He, he goes ahead and he lists. He lists three things here. He says that decrees such as do not handle, do not taste, and do not touch. Listen to what he says about that, which, which refer to things destined to perish with use and according with the commandments and the, and the teachings of of men. He says, look, these things have no eternal value. These things are all going to perish. These things are all going to die. Why? Because they're the commandments and they're the teaching of men. That men have come up with these rules and these regulations and you keep submitting yourself to them. Why? Why are you doing that? Why are you obeying or submitting yourself to these rules and regulations which are not of God, but it's rules and regulations that man came up with because what we're doing is we, we're, we're, we're making this appearance that we have died to Christ and we're obeying all these rules and regulations to make ourselves look spiritual. And he said, you're not going to find in that what, what you are looking for. He lists three things here. He says, <clears throat> do not handle, do not touch, or do not taste. All right, do not, do not handle. Uh, the picture there is that they were being ma ma manipulated in certain ways to not handle certain things or not be involved in certain things. Do not taste. He's talking here about what you eat and what you drink. Do not do not touch. It's those. It, it, the picture there is being influenced in your life not to touch, not to be a part of certain things because it makes you look like you're extremely spiritual. But what you're doing is you're placing yourself under rules and regulations of men instead of surrendering to Jesus and surrendering to Christ. And don't we do the exact same thing? Don't we have a tendency to set up rules and regulations that make us look spiritual by obeying them when we know deep down inside that we have not submitted ourselves to the authority of Jesus, that we're doing these things in our own strength to make us look good instead of remembering and understanding that when we come to Jesus, we die. It's no longer I, but it's Jesus who lives in me, and we're living under the authority of the presence of God in our life instead of submitting to rules and regulations that ma that man has come up with. And I you know what I find is that we do the exact same thing because, listen to me, it's real easy to easy to check a lot of boxes saying, I've done this, 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 and this, instead of living surrendered to Jesus. But, but there's no victory, there's no peace, there's no real life in obeying a set of rules. It only comes through Jesus. Then he goes ahead and he, he ends verse 23 with this. He, with this, he says, these matters which, to be sure, have the appearance of wisdom. You hear what he's saying? Man, they look good. They look, it looks really wise. It looks really good. And he lists three things here. Self-made religion, self-abasement, and severe treatment of the body. But in all this stuff, there's no value against fleshly indulgence. There's no victory here. There's no victory over me. There's no victory over my flesh. There's, there's, there's no victory in obeying these things, even though they look good. And self-made religion. Me coming up with rules and regulations and in ways that I think that I've got to do this, this, and this in order to really worship. Look, <clears throat> worship comes from a heart that is surrendered before God and says, God, you're God and I'm not, and I allow you to be on the throne of my heart. Heart, you do in and through my life what you want to do. You see, that's a heart that's ready for worship. It's not obeying a set of rules that we come up with or having to do things a certain way. It's all about surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus. When you go back and you think about worship, the first time worship appeared in Scripture was in Genesis chapter 22 in the, the context of Abraham and Isaac. When God told Abraham to take Isaac and lay him up on the altar and, and as a sacrifice. And when what Abraham did was he showed God that that which had been most important to him in his life, which was his son, he was willing to lay up on the altar. And then he was ready for worship. You see, that's the same thing with us. We're ready for worship when we lay those things on the altar before God that's been more important to us in our relationship with Jesus. You see, it's not doing things a certain way. It's about surrendering 
to Jesus. And he goes on, he mentions self-abasement and severe treatment. That self-abasement was that degrading of oneself to bring about humility, thinking extremely low of oneself. Basically, the, the, the picture is this, is that, that I'm going to de degrade myself and the things that I'm a part of to the point that you think that I'm really, really humble. When you look at me, you think it, it leaves a picture of humility, but really what I'm doing is just <clears throat> show, making you think that I'm humble when I'm really not. All right, And then it, this severe treatment, that denying myself of certain things, uh, enduring extreme hardships for religious purposes to, to, sh to make you think that I'm extremely spiritual by denying myself of certain things <clears throat> instead of my simply surrendering myself to Jesus. Because notice what he says, that last statement. That last statement says none of this, none of this has any value at all in empowering me against the indulgence of my flesh. You see, we got to go back to that very, very first statement. If you have died with Christ, since you have died with Christ. As believers, we've got to understand what happened to us when we came to Jesus if we're going to walk in victory. You see, victory is not me doing all these things. Victory is not me submitting myself to the authority of man-made rules. Victory is not me doing without things to make myself look spiritual. Victory comes when we truly surrender ourselves to the Lordship of the one who lives inside of us, and he will empower us to overcome the desires of the flesh. You know, I am so thankful that the Lord's allowed me to see many, many ways to worship and to participate with other believers in exalting the name of Jesus. He's allowed me to spend a lot of time out west and, and in other parts of our country. He's allowed me the opportunity to experience worship in other areas of the world. And one of the things I began to realize early on is that a lot of things that we do, that we do because... It's what we do, and we think it's the way that it has to be done. I mean, I remember one night in another country that the only the only instrument that they had was a big old bass drum, and they took they they started beating that big old bass drum in rhythm and started singing. And I'm thinking, man, this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. Cause see, I've been taught you got to do certain things certain ways. That's not so. All right, it's not about it's not about the way that we do stuff under the authority of the rules that we've set. It's about Jesus. And it's about come, realizing and coming to the point that where I realize that what I really need is Jesus. He's the one worthy of worship. It's not about me making myself look spiritual, but it's about me surrendering to the one that loved me enough to become my sin so I could become the righteousness of God and me living under his authority. Since you have died to the elementary principle of the world, stop all this surrendering to the things that you've been freed from. And let's get serious about just living surrendered to Jesus. I hope you have a blessed day. May you today walk in obedience to Jesus, living under his authority. And will you let Jesus be Jesus in you today? I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you so much for watching Complete in Christ as we strive to teach you about the Christ life. And we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and may you have a blessed day walking with Jesus.